Now that we can select our objects, let's start transforming them. Unfortunately, I don't mean that in the Autobot sense of the word, I just mean our basic manipulations. In the last video, we talked about the idea of the active object and how that's the one that shows up in the properties editor over on the right side of Blender. Well, in this case, our cube is the active object, and we can see in the transform panel that we have its location, rotation, and scale properties. To change any of these, we can just left click in any input field, and for the location X, I'll just type in two and then hit enter. Now it's moved two along the X axis. When you hover your mouse over any of these input values, it'll change into two arrows pointing in either direction. That indicates that you can also just left click and hold and drag left and right in order to slide those values around. That way we can easily change the location along the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis. Now let's take a second to talk about how these input fields work because they're actually pretty clever. They have a whole bunch of shortcuts built in to make working with them really fast. First, you can do any sort of math inside of them that you want. So if we want to do for the X direction, two plus five, we can do that just fine. But they also work with units. Blender uses meters by default, but we could type in anything that we want, as long as we use the right notation. So we could type in five CM for centimeters, or we could type in five FT for feet. It'll do all that conversion for us and convert it back into meters. If you really want to change your units, then you can do so in the scene properties. Right now we're in the object properties, which is the square with the corners around it. But if we go to the cone, ball, and dot icon, which is just a couple icons up from that one, then we have this panel called units, and we can change it from metric to imperial or change any of these other settings. For now though, let's go back to the object properties, which is again the orange one with the square with the four corners. A couple other handy things about these inputs is that you can left click and drag down for any of these that are grouped together to change them all at the same time. So if I wanted to set these all to two, then I can just left click on the first one, drag down, let go of my mouse, type in two, hit enter, and now these are all set to two. I can also reset these all back to their defaults simply by hovering over and hitting backspace. That's probably one of the most handy shortcuts in all of Blender. All right, but enough nerding out about inputs, let's also look at rotation. We can rotate it along the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis. Now I'll go ahead and hit backspace to clear that out before we look at scale. We can scale it along the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis. Above that we have a rotation mode, but that's a much more complicated topic for another day. For now, just know that location, rotation, and scale are properties of the object. But of course, changing them in the properties editor is a little bit cumbersome and slow, especially if we're just inputting numbers. That's not very fun. So instead, let's do it interactively. We can switch our tool in the toolbar from the box select tool to the move tool. With this, we can just left click and drag on any of these arrows to move it along that axis. So I can move it along the Y axis, the X axis, and the Z axis. I can also left click and drag in this circle to move it according to the screen. These little squares are also pretty handy too. The blue one's gonna move it along everything except the Z axis, so that's the Z plane. The red one will move it along everything except the X axis, which is the X plane, and the green one's gonna move it along the Y plane. In addition to the move tool, we also have the rotate tool, which as you'd expect allows us to rotate along the X, Y, and the Z. And according to the view. One handy shortcut with this is that sometimes you want to rotate things in even increments, and to do that, you can just hold down control while you're rotating. I'll get these tick marks, and I can move it more precisely. Another way to move something more precisely is to hold down shift while it's being transformed. So if I go and rotate this, and hold down shift, then it'll really slow down my movements and I can get really precise. This actually also works with the number inputs. So if I'm moving this and I find it's just moving it too fast, I can hold down shift and again, just move this really slowly. This is another thing that I just wish was in all other programs. Beneath the rotate tool, then we have the scale tool. We can scale along the Z. And this is behaving a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and reset our rotation just by hovering over our rotation values in the properties editor and hitting backspace. There we go. Now as I scale this, it'll scale it straight up and down along the Z axis. I can scale it along the Y and scale it along the X. Now the reason it was behaving weird is that rotation happens before scaling in the order of operations, but getting into all that is way too big of a rabbit hole for now, so let's just reset our rotation. 
If you're really observant, you might have noticed that the scale tool has a little triangle icon in the bottom right, just like the select tool does. And we can also left click and hold to switch to a different type of scale tool. If we do that, then we can go over to the scale cage, which gives us all these little dots around the box. And we can manipulate this a little bit more as if we were transforming an image in Photoshop, but just in three dimensions. Go ahead and try clicking and dragging on the dots in the center of a face, along the corners, or along an edge. For now though, I'll go ahead and left click and hold and set this back to the scale tool. Beneath that we have the all-in-one tool, where we can move, rotate, and scale all in the same gizmo. Now as you're watching some video tutorials, you might see that somebody has the box select tool enabled, but they still have gizmos. If that's the case, then they must have enabled it in the gizmos dropdown, which is the bow and arrow looking icon in the top right of the header. Underneath that, we can turn on our move, rotate, or scale gizmos, and this allows them to be used in any tool. I often like to leave the move gizmo on just so that I can use it while also using the box select tool, but at the moment, let's just leave everything at their defaults. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And now let's try to reset this cube back to its default state. The way to undo something, like in most other programs, is to just hit Control Z. You can see as I do that, it'll step backwards, but I can only undo so many times. And wow, that actually got me all the way back to the default cube. If I wanted to redo something, I can just hit Shift Control Z. That'll do redo. So again, Control Z to undo, Shift Control Z to redo. Now let's say the box is stuck here and I don't have any more undo steps to work with. Well, of course, I could just go over to the transforms, hover my mouse over and hit backspace in order to reset all of these, but there's another way to do it as well. I can also clear the transformations because sometimes we just don't wanna go digging through the menus. To do that, we can go to object, clear, and clear location, rotation, and scale. Let's do location. Again, object, clear, and rotation, and then object, clear, and scale. Now the hotkeys for this are over on the right. You can see it's Alt-G, Alt-R, and Alt-S. Using the gizmos to transform our object was definitely a lot faster than using the properties editor. However, there's an even faster way, and that's with keyboard shortcuts. If you ever forget, then you can go to Object and Transform, and you can see them on the right next to Move, Rotate, and Scale. It's G, R, and S. So G for Grab, R for Rotate, and S to Scale. Let's go ahead and hit G with the cube selected. That'll jump us right into grab mode, and we can move our mouse around and change the location of our cube. Then left click to confirm. This works a little bit different than other programs, which might switch us to the move tool, and then we have to click again in order to drag it along or what have you. Blender actually just jumps you straight into the action, and it takes a little bit to get used to at first if you're coming from a different program, but it's a lot faster of a way to work, so I think you'll get used to it pretty quickly. Again, let's hit G to grab, move our mouse, and then left click or hit enter to confirm. We can do that same thing with rotate. R to rotate, move your mouse. If you get really close to the center of rotation, then you can rotate it quite a lot. And if you move your mouse really far away from the center of rotation, you can move it more precisely. But either way, once you're happy with it, you can left click to confirm. And then let's try S for scale. Just hit S, that'll pop you into scale mode. You can scale it down and then left click or enter to confirm. There's a lot of hotkeys that you can use for transformation, but the most important ones are easy to remember. To constrain something along an axis, simply hit the letter of that axis on your keyboard as you're in the move mode. So here I've already hit G, so I'm moving my cube around, and then I can hit X to constrain it to the X axis. If I want to switch that up and actually move it along the Y axis, then I can hit Y. Or if I want to move it along the Z axis, I can hit Z. I can do this in any order. X, Y, and Z. And then whenever you're happy, just left click or hit enter to confirm. This also works with rotation. Hit R, that'll automatically go into rotate mode. Hit X to rotate around the X axis, Y to rotate around the Y axis, and Z to rotate around the Z axis, and then left click to confirm. Lastly, let's do that with scale, but before we do that, let's clear our rotation again. So let's hover over the rotation X, Y, Z in the properties editor and hit backspace. All right, now that everything's right side up, we can hit S to scale. That'll jump us right into the scale action. Then we can hit X to scale along the X axis, Y to scale along the Y, and of course, Z to scale along the Z. 
If your cursor reaches the end of the screen, then it'll just wrap around like Pac-Man. And as always, left click to confirm. All right, the last helpful thing about using these hotkeys to move, rotate, and scale is that you can also input numbers. So let's say that I wanted to move this two units along the X axis. Well, just like I could put in a two over here in the transform, if I wanted to like add two, I could just do plus two, do like a math operation. Uh, if I wanted to do that over in the 3D view without going to the properties editor, I could just hit G to move, X to constrain that along the X axis, and then type in two and hit enter. That'll just move it two units in the X direction. Let's try that again with the Z axis. So let's hit G, Z to move it along the Z axis, and then I'll type in one to move it one unit up and then hit enter. As I'm sure you've guessed, we can also do this with rotation and scale. I'll hit R to rotate, X to constrain it to the X axis, type in 10 to rotate it 10 degrees, and then hit enter. Lastly, S to scale, and this time I'll change it along all axes at once. So instead of hitting an axis, I'll just type in two to double it in size. If I wanted to cut that size in half, then I could hit S, type in 0.5, and then enter to confirm. Now I'd like to get this back to its original state. Let's just go to object, clear. So I'll just clear the location there and it'll go back to the center of the world. If I want to focus on it, remember I can go to view and then frame selected. And then let's clear the rotation and scale. But for this one, I'll use the hotkey. Rotate is the R hotkey. So to clear it, I'll hit Alt R. And then to clear the scale, I'll hit Alt S. We've already talked about how to use Control Z to undo and Shift Control Z to redo but we also have something called the redo panel or the adjust last operation panel that pops up whenever we do an action. So let's say I go ahead and hit G and then move my cube somewhere else. We'll have this little panel pop up in the bottom left that's currently collapsed that just says move. If I expand that, then we can see all of the properties for that action. I can go ahead and adjust this here. And this panel allows us to fine tune any action that we just took. So if I want to set this to exact numbers, let's just say I was eyeballing it, but I want to set this to exactly 0.3 and 2 and 0.5, then I can do that pretty easily here in the redo panel. If you don't see that after you complete an action, then you can go to view and just make sure that adjust last operation is turned on. You can also get that anywhere in the 3D view by hitting F9. All right, I know we only talked about our basic transformations in this lesson, but I threw a ton of information at you. Again, you don't have to memorize it all right away, but I do want you to practice moving, rotating, and scaling things. Try doing it with the gizmos in the toolbar try doing it in the properties editor, and try doing it with the G, R, and S hotkeys. Try to move something along an axis, and try to move something in specific increments. And don't forget Control Z to undo, because we all need that sometimes.